you know, big question, what causes it? Well, here's what we know so far. I'm going to take it inside the, inside the blood vessel here. And you can see we have those red blood cells. We have something called von Willebrand factor, and we have the platelets. And what, what happens here is we have Adam TS13, with, which is what I describe as the scissors of the cell. So what Adam TS13 is supposed to do is actually clip this von Willebrand factor. Just like that. So it's just kind of making these uh, von Willebrand factor, we call them multimers, into smaller pieces so things can nicely flow through the blood vessel. Well, when you have a deficiency of your scissors, when you have Adam TS13 deficiency, those von Willebrand molecules aren't cut apart like they're supposed to be, and then the platelets basically get caught up in them. And then when things try to flow nicely through the blood vessels, you get this shearing effect where the red blood cells kind of get uh, broken apart as they, as they go through. And so that's what causes this thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura is that you get these low platelets that are literally just being caught up in this von Willebrand factor. You get these weird peer, uh, peering um, red cells which are, are schistocytes and that's what causes the anemia. And then furthermore, when you have so many platelets kind of getting caught, caught up there, you don't get good blood flow. And when you don't get good blood flow, you can get things like, like stroke or kidney injury. And that blockage of, of blood flow is exactly what's, what's causing that. So how we diagnose it um, is really looking for those things, right? So we're looking for, when a, when a patient comes in, first it's recognition, really getting the word out about what these symptoms can look like. And then we look at the platelet counts and red blood cells. And then one of the advances in TTP diagnosis among clinicians has been using something we call the plasma score, which was a, a study that was done to try to make it easier to recognize TTP because sometimes the lab testing isn't back right away. And so they've, they've um, done a lot of work trying to kind of validate this score to help clinicians who may not have the Adam TS13 test back right away to determine who needs treatment right away. And so that's been a major kind of simple advance is just coming up with a score to more quickly recognize uh, cases. And then the other um, kind of key to diagnosis is that lab test is actually we can measure the amount of scissors or the amount of Adam TS13 in the blood. And an Adam TS13 level of less than 10% is really diagnostic of this diagnosis. And so why would Adam TS13 be low? Like, why does this, this happen? Well, we don't know exactly what triggers it, um, but we do know that it's clear that there's an antibody. So, you know, you're supposed to make antibodies to things like viruses, or when you get a vaccine, you're supposed to make an antibody. But for some reason, patients with TTP don't, they start to recognize their Adam TS13 as not self and start to either clear it or inhibit its function. Other uh, patients, it's more rare, but you can have an inherited mutation or a gene that causes low Adam TS13. And so we really have two types of TTP. The far more common in adults, we call immune or acquired TTP, meaning you're not born with it, but you have an antibody. And then you have hereditary TTP, or we also call it congenital TTP is where and that's really an inherited genetic mutation that you have. So we heard a little bit about how we now treat TTP, but to, to, to give you a sense of where we are and, and where we're going, um, there have been, uh, the ISCH is an international society of thrombosis and hemostasis, and they've put together a guideline panel of how to treat TTP. And we know still a very key part of therapy is what we call therapeutic plasma exchange, or PLEX. So this is something that not many people outside of uh, those who know family members or personally experienced TTP will know about. But if you, if you think about it, the goal is really to give patients back their scissors, to give them the ability to cut back up that von Willebrand factor again, and then to clear the antibody. So for most cases, it's, it's an antibody-mediated process and you want to get rid of it. So what we do with therapeutic plasma exchange is we take the patient 
And unfortunately, this involves putting in a large catheter, which is a, a, a very big, big, big deal initially. Um, once, once it's in, we can take the patient's plasma, put it through a filter, and then give them fresh frozen plasma back. And what this is doing is actually removing the antibody and giving them back their scissors. They're adding TS-13. And this, it can take a while, so as we, as we heard, you can have to have multiple uh, uh, multiple treatments, you know, up. some people are very, very refractory TTP and need to stay in the hospital for weeks with this. And then the other approach to therapy is we have steroids and rituximab. And what those um, therapies are really going after is this antibody uh, to, to, TT, for, to Adam TS-13. It's trying to get that antibody to go away. And so rituximab was um, it, it originally just used for patients who are very refractory to treatment, but now we've actually moved it up. It's been shown to, to be effective, to be given kind of earlier in treatment. And it's been shown to be able to, to decrease the, t the time on um, plasma exchange and potentially reduce the exacer exacerbation rate. And that means the chance of getting TTP uh, again. We also um, heard from uh, Sanofi about the only FDA-approved therapy, which is patelizumab. And I think of this uh, medication as really blocking platelet binding to von Willebrand factor. So this has been a major advance uh, for patients because it works very quickly. And it is continued after a patient stops the plasma exchange to kind of prevent those early exacerbations, or as we were describing that, I stop the, the therapeutic plasma exchange and my platelet count um, falls again. And so that was a, a major advance for patients with TTP. And then as far as follow-up follow for patients, so unfortunately, as we again heard from our survivor, is that we, I think people used to think of, of TTP as like a one and done thing. It's not. Um, patients can unfortunately have relapses. Some people will just have a have one episode, um, but there, there definitely is a relapse risk. And so we now kind of consider preemptive treatment for patients who don't yet have a TTP relapse, but have low Adam TS-13 levels. We also know that even outside of just of, of TTP episodes, patients who have had a prior episode also have long-term um, long complications, such as increased risk of preeclampsia if they go on to become pregnant, strokes, hypertension, and because this is such a traumatic event that we, uh, you know, they've never heard of this diagnosis often before when they come into the hospital, there's a high incidence of post-traumatic stress and depression. And for patients with hereditary TTP, so the, remember this is gonna be a rare diagnosis in adults, I submitted less than 5%, um, but that's, there's unfortunately genetic testing available for those patients. And, and they are treated similar, in a similar way to patients with immune TTP, except that we don't have to get rid of the antibody, so we can just use plasma infusion. So plasma infusion isn't enough for someone with uh, immune TTP, but it is for, for congenital TTP. So this is showing me would give plasma infusions for that. And then where, where are we going? So our last slide, I'm here, like what's, what's next for TTP? Well, we're still trying to figure out for immune causes, what's the best immunosuppression regimen? We know that people don't always have the same responses to prednisone and rituximab. There's been a development of a question of the role of recombinant Adam TS-13 or man-made Adam TS-13 because that's you know what's lacking in some cases. And then there have been some case reports um, out there, though caplicizumab right now is only approved with plasma exchange, is could it be done you know, without plasma exchange or without the catheter is an area of, of potential uh, interest. And so our, our take home points is that TTP you know, results really from this lack of scissors or Adam TS-13 deficiency, mm -hmm. which is in the most case an autoimmune or um, immune cause, but it can be congenital that um, patients and families, we heard again, uh, all about the signs and symptoms of, of TTP, like abdominal pain, fatigue, confusion, strokes, um, it, it, because it, you need to get treatment really right away because it is life-threatening. And there's lots of exciting work to be done in TTP, and we hope for um, more advances to, to come. 
And a really a big thank you uh, for all of you for listening and taking the science lesson. We'll get